Okay, so in the Lewis model, um, we can use uh, Lewis structures to model both covalent bonds and ionic bonds, which is part of the reason why Lewis structures are such a powerful tool. Okay, um, again, remember that the guiding principle whenever you're doing Lewis structures is the octet rule. You want all of the elements involved in the bonding to have a total of eight electrons accessible to them. Okay. Um, now, if we're to take a look at a, um, a simple metal, so for example, uh, something like potassium. Okay. Uh, potassium is in the first group, okay, which means it has one dot, okay, one valence electron. Now, if you take a look at potassium just as such, you're going to see that it's going to have a tough time getting up to eight electrons by forming bonds through a sharing of electrons, right? It only has one dot, which means at most it can only form one bond, which means that at most by sharing electrons, potassium is only going to get to two electrons, right? So for example, if we were to consider potassium bonding with chlorine, Okay, which is going to have seven, seven valence electrons. Uh, and we were to suppose that this was some kind of covalent bond. We would end up with a structure that looks something like this. Okay. And if we count up electrons here, we'll see that the potassium only has two. Okay, we can count both of the electrons in the bond because we're assuming that those are shared. Um, the chlorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so in this particular bonding model, the chlorine fulfills the octet rule, but the potassium is actually quite a few electrons short. Okay, so clearly something is not correct here. Um, the way that potassium and in fact all of the other metals get around this is that instead of forming covalent bonds by sharing electrons they actually give electrons away okay so the um, electron configuration of potassium is actually uh, 4s1 right it has a uh, partially filled 4s shell um, it's important to recognize though that if somehow it could get rid of one electron, okay, it drops down to a filled three uh, quantum level, okay? So if we got rid of that 4s electron, the uh, three quantum level now becomes our outermost um, level, our valence level of electrons, and that three level is totally filled, right? So it's 3s2, 3p6. So by giving up an electron, potassium is actually able to get to a full octet. It's just one energy level lower, okay? So the way the potassium actually is gonna bond with uh, chlorine is not covalently, but ionically, okay? So instead of forming a covalent bond here, what actually happens is the chlorine actually sucks this electron up, okay? Totally takes it away. Um, and what we're left with is potassium that's missing one electron, which means it now has a positive charge, and chlorine, which has an extra electron, which means it now has a negative charge, okay? So here we can take a look at the bonding, right? This is now ionic bonding, just a positive charge being attracted to a negative charge. Um, again, by giving up one electron, the potassium has now reached a stable electron configuration of 3s2, 3p6. That means it has eight valence electrons. The chlorine, by picking up one of those electrons, now has eight electrons as well. Okay, so this is a filled shell and this is also stable. So now both of our species have um, fulfilled the octet rule. Okay. Um, we can use this for other elements as well to predict how they're going to um, bond. Um, so another example would be with something like aluminum. Okay, um, aluminum is in group 3A, which means it's going to have three valence electrons. Okay, 
Um, now, again, if you look at covalent bonding, you run into the same problem that we ran into with potassium. If aluminum was to form covalent bonds with chlorine, um, it could at most get a total of six electrons, okay, which is not a full octet. So subsequently, um, what we're going to do is the same thing that we did with potassium. We're going to give away all of these electrons, okay? Um, and this helps us determine um, what the formula of aluminum chloride would be. Um, we see that we have three electrons, okay? In order to get to a filled um, uh, quantum level, we have to give away all three of these electrons, okay? Um, so subsequently, what we're going to do is since we need to give away three electrons, um, we need three chlorines to take those electrons. Okay, so each one of these chlorines is going to pick up one electron. And what we're then left with is Al3+, plus, okay, because it's aluminum that's missing three electrons. Um, plus three uh, Cl minus, okay? Um, and that would then reduce to Al Cl3, right? So this shows us that aluminum, when it reacts with chlorine, is going to react such that there are three chlorines for every aluminum because each chlorine can take one of aluminum's um, extra electrons, okay? Um, we can also look at aluminum reacting with a different element. Okay, so for example, aluminum reacting with something like nitrogen. Okay, so nitrogen is in group 5A. That means it's going to have a total of five dots around it, five valence electrons. Okay, and the same principle here applies. Um, if we form covalent bonds here, we can get the nitrogen up to a full octet, okay? But the aluminum is still going to be stuck at six. So in order to get the aluminum up to a full octet, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer all of the electrons to the nitrogen, okay? Um, and by doing that, we have five electrons. If we transfer this one to nitrogen, we would have six. If we transfer this one also to the nitrogen, we would have seven on nitrogen, and if we transfer this final one to the nitrogen, we would actually have eight, okay? Um, and again, we now have species that both satisfy the um, octet rule, okay? So we have aluminum three plus again, just like we did before, okay? Um, and we now have nitrogen with three extra electrons, which means that this is going to be nitrogen three minus, okay? Um, again, the aluminum has a full octet in the um, sort of the, now the one energy shell, right? So it's one S2, one P6. The nitrogen, by picking up those three extra uh, electrons from nitrogen or from uh, aluminum now has also eight, okay? Um, so both of these satisfy the octet rule, and um, we're going to get the compound aluminum nitride, ALN. Okay?